Okay, I'm making a video of our chapter 12 test so that you can uh, figure out what you did wrong on the parts you missed. Okay, plurality. That's the most first place votes. B got 18, D got 14, C got 6, and A got 7. So B had the most first place vote votes. So B won with... 18 votes. Most first place votes. That's plurality method. Runoff. So that we take the top two. Well, B is, had the most first place votes. The second most first place votes was D with 14. Then it was 6 and 7. So we got to compare those. So if it was only these two doing, B would beat D and get those 18 votes. D would beat B and get those 14 votes. B would beat D and get those 6. Uh, B beat D would get those 4. And B would beat D and get those 3. So you can see it's a pretty lopsided... Uh, four, uh, 24, 28, 31 to 14. Did I count that wrong? 7, 25, 31. 31 to 14. So B is the runoff winner. And I showed my work. Board account. And this takes a little bit more time and it's easy to mess up. So, first place is four points, second is three, two, and one, 18 voters. So let's do A first. And A got uh, a third place, which is two points for every 18 votes. Then A got three points for each of the 14 votes. The dot means times. And then plus uh, A got one point for each of the six votes. And then A got four points for each of the four votes. And finally, A got four points for each of the three votes. Two times 18 is 36 plus 42 plus 6, plus 16, plus 12 equals uh, 36 and 12 is 48, and 42 is 90, 112. I believe, I'm going to check my, yep, that's what I had on my key. B. Four votes, eighteen to uh, four points, eighteen times, plus one point fourteen times, plus three points six times, plus two points four times, plus three points three times. Four times 18 is 72 plus 14 plus 18 plus 8 plus 9. 72 plus 8 is 80 plus 18 is 98 plus 14 is 102, 112, plus 9 is 121. C, 3 points 18 times, plus 2 points 14 times, plus 4 points 6 times, plus 3 points four times, 
plus 1.3 times. 3 times 18 is 54 plus 28 plus 24 plus 7 uh, plus 12. 3 times 4 is 12, not 7. That's adding. 12 plus 3, which makes 54 and 28. That's 62, 70, 82, 106. 118, 121. And D. D got 1.18 times plus 4 points 14 times plus 2 points 6 times plus 1 point four times plus two points three times. And, and if you're looking at these, you should have a one, two, three, and four that are times 18. You should have a one, two, three, and four times 14. You should have a one, two, three, and a four times a six, and so on. So you can check and make sure you did all the right ones. There should be one, two, three, four, and each one of these times the number at the bottom. And let's see, one times 18 plus uh, 56 plus 18, uh, 12, two times six is 12, thinking about the last one here, plus four plus six. So 10 plus 12 is 22, plus 8 is 30, 40, plus 56 is 96. So we have a tie for first. And here's my work. And so there's no winner. using the border count. We don't know who would be the winner. So border count runs into a dilemma and you have to result to some other method to break the tie, maybe a tiebreaker between B and C, and go and look at who would win between B and C. But without a tiebreaker, the border count doesn't give us a winner. So then we do pairwise. So if we don't know who's going to win all the pairs, we'll start off with just maybe A versus B. And if we're looking at only A and B, oh, I bumped my computer and, and it shut, uh, stopped the recording. So, uh, so much for doing that. So I got to continue here. So pairwise. So we don't know who the pairwise winner is. We don't have any clue. We might make a guess. Maybe B is the winner or something. So I'll just start and start working on it. And I'll compare A and B. So B beats A for 18 votes. And here A beats B. So A would get the 14. And B beats A here. So B gets the 6. And that's already over half, so this is over. But A beats B, 4. And A beats B, 3. And we get um, 18, 21 here. But we get uh, uh, 24 here. So B wins. So A can't be the pairwise winner because it won't beat everybody because it doesn't even beat B. So we may want to investigate B further. So let's try B against C. So, B beats C and picks up the 18, but C beats B, so they, it gets 14, C gets 14, C beats B, so gets the 6, C beats B and gets the 4, and B beats C and gets the 3. So, this one's a little closer. 
This is 24, 21. No, it's the same there, but this time C wins. So B is not, A is not the Condorcet winner. B is not. C still has a chance. C beats B. We need to check if C beats A. So C beats A for the 18. A beats C for the 14. C beats A for the 6. A beats C for the 4. And A beats C for the 3. So here we get 24 to 21. C again is a winner. So if C beats D, we have a Condorcet winner. So we're going to try C versus D. C beats D for 18. D beats C for the 14. C beats D for the 6. C beats D for the 4. And you can tell that D beats C 3. C is going to be the Condorcet winner. It wins this one. 17 and uh, 28. So C beat, wins every pairwise competition that it's in. So C is the pairwise winner. Also called the Condorcet winner. Okay, sequential runoff. So we kind of need to see this table. So I'm going to, uh, and I'm off the screen otherwise, so I'll have to, I'll talk about it up here. Um, so we throw out the one with the least number of first place votes. Well, we had 18, 14, 6, and 7. So 6 is the lowest, so we're going to throw out C. That means B has 18 and the 6, so B has 24 now. D has 14. C only one here, and so those 6 go to B. And A still is just with um, the 7. So A is still the lowest, lowest, so A will be the second candidate to be dropped. And then it becomes a contest between B and D. And we already did that in the pairwise. No, I guess we didn't. Yes, we did. B versus D. B wins. And the loser in the final one off is D. So B is the sequential winner the runoff winner, and the plurality winner. There is no winner for board account, and C is the bear, pairwise winner. So, turning the page. Fairness criteria one says, and this is the big if, if there is a Majority winner, it's, that one should win no matter which system you use. Okay, so we've got four of them. Plurality, uh, the next one we did was runoff. And we had board account, point system. And then we had pairwise. And we had sequential runoff. So we need to check all five systems 
to see if they produce the same as a majority winner. The problem is with the if. Do we have someone with a majority? A majority means over 50% of the votes. Well, we have 18 plus 14 is 34, 44, 47 total votes. So someone would have to have uh, 24 votes to have a majority. No one has 24 votes in the round. So there is no majority winner. So when we go to here and say, if there's a majority winner, did it win plurality? Did it win rough? Did it? And since we don't have one, we don't even have to check against all of these things because we didn't have a majority winner. Fairness criteria two says, if we have a pairwise winner, can beat every candidate head to head, then that one should be the winner of all the systems. Well, did we have a pairwise winner? And the answer is yes. C was a pairwise winner that we just got. So if C is the pairwise winner, then C should win every system if this uh, fairness criteria works. Well, the plurality winner was B, which pairwise winner was C, so there is a problem. This fairness criteria, the C winner should win everything, every system, it doesn't win plurality, so it violates Criterion 2. How about the second one, the runoff? Well, the runoff also picked B and not C, so it violates Criterion 2. The pairwise winner should win everything. If it can beat everyone head-to-head, -head, it should be the overall winner. Uh, the board account picked no one. So we can't say it violates it because it didn't pick anybody. It should have picked C, so in some sort of sense it violates because it didn't pick anything, and it should have picked C. So we could say it violates just by... By not doing anything, coming up with an answer, it violates that system. C wasn't the winner in board account. Pairwise didn't violate because it picked the pairwise winner. And then sequential runoff. I bet you can tell. The sequential runoff. Did it pick C? Nope, it picked B. And so it violates the Condorcet, the pairwise winner rule. So all of them seem to have violated the rule. Now, if the plurality was C and the pairwise winner was C, then it wouldn't have, pair, plurality wouldn't have violated. But it picked B, but not C. If the runoff winner was C and the pairwise winner was C, then it wouldn't have violated this rule. If the board account had picked C instead of not picking anybody, then it wouldn't have violated the rule. And same here. If the sequential had picked C instead of uh, B, it wouldn't have violated the rule.
I hope you understand better how these fairness criteria are tested. Okay. Now we're on to uh, get the camera in the right place here. It was pointed out to me clearly several times that 20 plus 15 plus 17 plus 19 plus 8 does not equal 100%. So there must be some other shareholders. And since they're not listed here, I'm going to assume that they're all smaller than the 8%. But that's probably a bad, bad thing to do to assume. But uh, let's just look at how this works here. To have a shareholder uh, be able to get something passed, they need more than 50% of the votes. Andrew doesn't have it, neither does Kelsey or Nolan or Ryan or Pearl. But Andrew and Kelsey together make only 35%, so they can't get something passed just on their, their own. They need somebody else. However, if Andrew, Kelsey, and Nolan went together, they would have 52%. So whatever they're pushing could get passed. I think that's 52. That's 32 plus 20 is 52. What about, what if it was just these three? Could they get something passed? 15 plus 17 is 32 plus 19 is 51%. So if they had an issue they wanted, they could do it. Or these two with that one. Or any of these three could do it. Now let's talk about poor Pearl here. Pearl. If she teamed up with Ryan and Nolan, they wouldn't have 50%. If she even teamed up with the 20 and the 19, which is uh, 39 and 8 is only 47%. Not enough to do it. Pearl could team with any two of these and not reach 50%. So if any three of the, if any of these over here wanted to get something passed, they would try to get two of these. They wouldn't use Pearl because her votes wouldn't help them. So if Andrew wanted something passed, he would either team up with Kelsey and Nolan or Kelsey or Ryan or Nolan or Ryan. Teaming up with Pearl doesn't help Andrew, or it doesn't help Kelsey, or it doesn't help Nolan, or it doesn't help Ryan. Pearl's vote just doesn't mean anything to the other people, She and she can't get anything passed unless she can get all four of these, or, or three of these to go with her. She needs three, whereas any one of these only needs two, so Pearl's vote and if she got three, they could have done what they wanted to anyway. So Pearl's vote is meaningless. Meaningless in terms that Any other three will make fifty plus percent over fifty percent, and so any other three. could or might not join with Pearl, or Pearl might try to join them, but it wouldn't make a difference. So Pearl's vote is meaningless. 
whether she joined forces with, if she joined forces with two of them, can't get anything passed if the other ones are against them. If she joined forces with any three, well, the three could go by themselves and whatever they wanted, they could do and Pearl doesn't matter. So poor Pearl's getting picked on. Okay. Next page. So we're supposed to figure out the percentages. Pretty simple. Uh, three A's, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 A's. Out of six by five is 30. And so if there's 17 30s, there's 13 30s for B. This is for A. This is for B. And so seventeen divided by thirty is fifty seven percent. I didn't count off if you didn't round it up, but you should have. And if it's fifty seven for A, then it's oh, thirty. It should have been the rest, 43% for B. So now we're supposed to gerrymander the states, making six districts and five in each district. So six times five is 30, and there's 30. So the, the district, each district is in maximum favor of the least popular. Well, B was the least popular, so how many can they win? So I'm going to go down here and do the final answer first. The least favored is B with 13 voters for them. So to gerrymander this, and if there's five voters, it takes three for B, and A would have to get two to be close enough, but still in B's favor, and B would win. So if B, there was three B's and two A's, B would win. So since B's got to overpower A, it's got to have more. So it's got to have at least three to two. Three to two, and we'd use nine of their 13. Three to two, and that's 12 of the 13. They do not have enough votes to win any more districts. There's one left, so that would make four, and then there would be zero and five. Now, this one could have been on one of these threes and been four and one for a B, but the most a B could win is four. So now it's up to us to make it Graph this somehow so that B wins four of the districts and make them contiguous. So if I, and there've got to be five letters in the district. So what we kind of did before was, well, if we want A to lose, we'll try to make districts that have a lot of A's in them. So there's a five and zero one match from the down at the bottom here. 0 and 5. A got 5. And then we can do, if we could put a lot of A's, another one. Uh, maybe 4 and 1. Well, that might be something like this. Now, we should be able to somehow get 3 B's and 2 A's in the rest of the districts and get it to work. Well, I'm going to have trouble here making a contiguous get district and have having um, two two A's in it. I have to get two A's and two A's and two A's into dis different districts. So I'm going to have to change this a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do three B's and two A's this way and take this out. So there's a district. And now I was doing uh, four A's. We'll just do, uh, we'll go 
There's three B's in that one. Let's just keep going here. Uh, three B's and two A's could be this one. Um, there's too many A's down here. This is not working that way, so I'm going to have to change how I do it. So I'll just do this here. There's five A's, four A's and a B. Now let's try it. Uh, three B's and an A. Three B's and, and, and two A's. Uh, two A's and three B's right there. And three B's and two A's there. So that worked. So this is the one I want. I was having trouble getting them together. Okay, final page. Okay, if we're going to do 40 teachers and we have this many students in each of the four schools, how many students are there? So just to make sure you're doing it right, you might want to use a calculator instead of doing it in your head. And there's 1,100 students. If there's 1,100 students and we're going to do 40 teachers, then there's 27 and a half students per teacher. So, <coughs> of course, you can't have a half a student, so some class will have 28 and some have 26 or something like that. Or uh, whatever. So now we have to distribute. Well, if there's 27 students per teacher, then every 27 and the 300 would get a teacher. So 300 divided by 27.5, they would get A, school A would get 10.90 Teachers, rounded off, the, that means 10 for sure. That's the minimum quota. We've got a pretty high decimal. They're likely to get another one. Let's take a look at B. 475 divided by 27.5. That's 17.27. So they will get 17, not as likely to get uh, an additional if these don't come out to be 40. 150 divided by 27.5, There, that's 5.45. So they're going to get 5 at minimum, and they might get more. They, they'd do better in this one but there'd have to be two extra because this one's going to get it first, this one second. Let's go on here and 175 divided by 27.5, and that's 6.36, so that's 6. So how many we have? 10, 27, 32, 38. That allots... 38 of them. 38 of them are handed out. We still have two more to go to get to 40. So who gets the two? Well, the high, according to Hamilton method, the highest decimal portion gets the extras. There's the highest. They, they'll get one. The next highest is here, so they'll get one. So the Hamiltonian method will give 11 17, 6, and 6. All right. Now, the Alabama paradox, which some of you didn't have down in your note cards very well, says, what if there was one more 
of what we're doing, representative or teacher or whatever. So we're doing teachers here. So what if there was 41 teachers for the 1,100 students? We get a new divisor. 1100 0, 0 divided by 41 is 26.83-ish. So now we're going to divide each of those by that number. And there's a shortcut for doing that on a calculator, but I'm not going to take the shortcut so that you can you guys can follow along. 300 divided by 26.83. And there's 11.1. So they're guaranteed to have 11 minimum quota. The 475 divided by 26.83, they're guaranteed to get 17 and got a pretty high decimal, so they're pretty likely to get another one. And the 150 divided by 26.83 gets 5.59 or five for sure, minimum quota, and it's in the running for extra, and not so this point one is not looking so good for them getting the extra. And finally, the 175 divided by 26.83 is 6.52. So they're guaranteed six. Now, we're going for 41 teachers now. Not 40, but 41. We, we added a teacher. So we got 11 and 17 is 28, 33, 39. So this is a total of 39 teachers, but we're supposed to disperse 41. So we got two extras again. Who gets them? Well, our highest decimal is there. So they go to 18. The next highest decimal is the 0.59, so they'll go to 6. This one, that's the 2, and these are going to stay the same. So we got 11, 29, 35, 41. We've handed out all the teachers. Did anybody get less than they would have gotten before? 11, 11. Nope. 17, got one more, 18. They got the extra one. These stayed the same. Nobody lost. So adding an extra teacher didn't cause any state to lose any. So there is no Alabama paradox. Because no state lost or no school lost a teacher. They all had the same number of teachers. Okay, now the Jefferson method is just doesn't look at the decimals at all. It just looks at this minimum quota. If it came out to be all 40 teachers, they would use it. If it didn't, they recommend just lowering the dot divisor which will increase the size of these numbers. If we divide by a smaller number, we get a bigger number here until the truncated numbers, the ones without the decimal, add up to be the 40. So 27.5 didn't allocate all of them. We did a lower number here, 26.83, and notice it still didn't do all 40 of them. It only did 39. Got more, but didn't get 40. So we have to go lower than 26.83. Let's try 26. For our modified uh, divisor. This is just an attempt. It may not be the right might might not give us the right answer. So I'm going to take my calculator out and go ahead and divide each of these numbers. 300 divided by 26 
and I'm only looking at the whole number, that would be 11 for the first school. I don't care about the decimals. Then I'll do the 475 divided by 26, and that would be 18. And then I'm going to do the 150 divided by 26, and that would be 5. And then I'm going to do the 175 divided by 26, and that would have been 6. Did that take care of all the teachers? 11 and 18 is 29, plus 5 is 34, plus 4 is 40. I got it on the first shot. All 40 go, and so that's what it is, using this standard divisor. I need to see the standard divisor and the disbursement. Now, if you'd chosen 25, what would we have gotten? An even smaller standard divisor. So I'm just going to do this one for interest and see how this works. So if I did 300 divided by 25, I would have gotten 12. If I did uh, 475 divided by 25, I would have gotten 19. And I think you can see I'm going to run over here. If I did 150 divided by 25, I would have gotten 6. And if I did 175 divided by 25, I would have gotten 7. And that would have handed out one more there, one more there, one more there, one more there. That would have handed out 44 teachers. I didn't have 44 teachers, so I couldn't use 25. I might have used, been able to use 26.6 instead of 0.83, or I might have been able to do 25.5, but somewhere around 26 will hand out all the teachers, regardless of what the decimals are. That's the Jefferson method.